The film begins with a scene of a man named Rama at home with his pregnant wife. Rama is a police officer who joins a special division to combat various transnational crimes. He used to begin his day by praying, exercising, and honing his punching skills with a boxing glove. The next day, Rama and other members of the special division, led by a sergeant named Jaka, boarded a black van bound for a Jakarta apartment. The apartment is suspected of being a hideout for armed criminals who illegally trade drugs and weapons. Jaka's team was tasked with ambushing the apartment and apprehending a man named Tama Riani, who was suspected of leading a criminal group in the apartment. Tama is a legend in the black world who frequently commits bank robberies, drug sales, and murders. Jaka explained to his members that Tama's apartment building had never been successfully ambushed by police for years because Tama always bribed corrupt cops and even collaborated with them to commit crimes. Tama has two accomplices named Mad Dog and Andy who help him manage his illegal business. Mad Dog is a violent man who enjoys violence and possesses exceptional martial arts abilities. Meanwhile, Andy is a young man who was recently hired by Tama due to his ability to read situations and apply tactics. Jaka and his team arrived at the location not long after and prepared to make an arrest. Wahyu, a lieutenant, had arrived first to assist Jaka in leading the ambush operation. Their squad was divided into two groups, the first would enter through the main door, and the second would storm in through the back door. After dispatching the front door guard, the first team immediately apprehended a man named Gopher, who was unlocking the second door. Rama, however, immediately helped Gopher and let him go after learning that he was only visiting his wife, who was sick and needed medicine. They then began a sweep from the first floor, arresting the criminal members who were scattered throughout the building. When they reached the sixth floor after checking each floor, a teenage boy appeared and ran away to inform his friend about the police presence in the apartment. Tama, who was monitoring the CCTV in the control room, received word from Mad Dog that the police unit had ambushed them in their apartment. Tama, knowing this, instructs Mad Dog to close all exit and communication doors in their apartment. Tama then called someone and directed his men to hunt down the police officers in the vicinity of the apartment. The first victims of an armed criminal group were two drivers in the black van previously driven by the police team. Then, from behind the window, some of Tama's hired snipers began shooting at the police officers one by one. The criminals who had been arrested took advantage of the opportunity to flee and counterattack. Tama then turned off all of the lights on the entire floor of the apartment and informed all of the criminals inside that the police squad was now on the sixth floor. He declared that whoever caught the cops would be allowed to live in the apartment without paying rent. Sergeant Jaka requested that Lieutenant Wahyu contact the police and request reinforcements after hearing the announcement. Lieutenant Wahyu, on the other hand, was unable to do so because the operation was not an official police mission but rather one ordered by a corrupt police superior who wanted to get rid of Tama in order to cover up all traces of corruption and bribery that they had committed thus far. Sergeant Jaka was enraged and disappointed after hearing Lt. Wahyu's confession, but he couldn't do much because he needed to move his team right away. Shortly after, armed criminal groups began shooting at the police squad in rapid succession, killing several officers on the spot. Tama and Andy, on the other hand, are keeping an eye on the police squad team via CCTV surveillance. Simultaneously, Andy appeared to recognize Rama, who was engaged in a shootout with other members of the police force. Sergeant Jaka directed all remaining members to retreat and seek refuge in a safer location in times of crisis. They took cover in an empty room, blocking the door with furniture. Sergeant Jaka was too late to warn his member when one of the police officers approached the window to check the situation, and he was killed by a shot from Thomas Sniper. Rama then took the initiative to find a way out by using an axe to punch holes in the frail floor area. When some police officers went downstairs, however, some criminals attacked them, and the fight resumed. Rama and several other officers opened fire on the criminals downstairs. Lieutenant Wahyu, Sergeant Jaka, and another security guard on the top floor fired at the door, which was already surrounded by armed criminal groups. When the situation became more chaotic and more criminals arrived, Rama threw a grenade in front of the vault and the bedroom door, causing the entire hallway to explode and killing the criminals on the floor. Tama, who saw this on the surveillance camera, told Mad Dog and Andy to go downstairs and invite their men to go find the remaining police officers. Tama's men began combing the area and killing any remaining enemies, ensuring that no one could escape. Rama and one of his injured colleagues, on the other hand, were transferred to the sixth floor, while Lt. Wahyu, Sergeant Jaka, and another member were transferred to another room on the fifth floor. Unfortunately, while Rama was transporting his partner to a safer room on the seventh floor, one of the criminal members unexpectedly caught up with them and attacked them with a machete. Rama had no choice but to fight while attempting to protect his injured comrade. Things worsened when several other criminal members arrived and attacked Rama, who had no weapons. To get rid of all the criminal members, he can only rely on his fighting skills and martial arts techniques. Rama eventually defeated the criminal group after a long and exhausting battle. He then approached his friend and led him to another room. 
Simultaneously, Andy enters the elevator with two of Thomas' men to track down the remaining police officers, but while inside, Andy unexpectedly attacks two of Thomas' men, killing them. He appears to be planning to betray Tama and assist the police in apprehending him. Meanwhile, Rama and his injured friends went to Gopher's room and requested assistance in obtaining medicine to treat his friend's wounds. Gopher immediately ordered them to hide behind a wall so that other criminals would not know where they were. Soon after, several criminals arrived and searched Gopher's room. Fortunately, they were unable to locate Rama and his friends. After the criminals left, Rama asked Gopher for assistance in caring for his injured friends while he searched for Sergeant Jaka and the remaining members of the police team. Unfortunately, when Jaka exited Gopher's room, Rama was pursued by armed criminal groups who were still combing the floor area. Rama then ran to the end of the hall to find a place to hide after killing one of them. However, because the door had been locked, he was forced to fight them alone. Rama's epic solo battle occurred, whereas in that battle, he had to defeat many people wielding long machetes without the use of any weapons. Rama was able to defeat them after a long battle. Then he tried to walk with his remaining strength to find another police officer. But then Andy grabbed him and dragged him into a room. Andy turned out to be Rama's older brother, who had left the house several years before. Rama then stated that he joined the arrest operation because he saw Andy's photo on the operation's target list and wanted to save him as he had promised their father. Andy, on the other hand, stated that he did not want to return to the house with Rama because he did not want their father to know about his current living situation. Andy believes that he will be a disappointment to his father at home, whereas in that place, he has power and is respected. He then offered to help Rama get out of there safely but Rama declined because he couldn't leave his friends who were still injured behind. Sergeant Wahyu, Lieutenant Jaka, and another member, on the other hand, were still hiding in one of the rooms on the fifth floor. There was a minor squabble between Sergeant Jaka and Lieutenant Wahyu, however, because Wahyu had lied to Jaka and his team during the operation. Angry, Sergeant Jaka directed Lieutenant Wahyu to locate and rescue the remaining police officers. After that, Sergeant Jaka left the room, only to be attacked by Mad Dog. Lieutenant Wahyu and his other members attempted to assist him, but when Mad Dog's men arrived, they chose to flee. Sergeant Jaka was shot by Mad Dog, but he wasn't killed right away. He intends to kill him in a fair fight without the use of any weapons. Jaka and Mad Dog engaged in a fierce duel. Although Sergeant Jaka could match Mad Dog's strength, Mad Dog won the fight and killed him by breaking his neck. Andy then encountered Mad Dog, who dragged Jaka lifelessly into the elevator to be handed over to Tama. Simultaneously, Rama saw Jaka being dragged into the elevator through a gap in the door of the room where he was hiding. Tama then told Mad Dog to attack and arrest Andy after they arrived at the control room and handed over Jaka. Tama, who saved Rama into the room via the CCTV camera, turns out to be aware of Andy's betrayal. Rama, on the other hand, was finally able to locate another member of the police force who was hiding with Lieutenant Wahyu. He then informs them both that Sergeant Jaka was killed by Mad Dog. They had no choice but to apprehend Tama, the main target of this ambush operation. They will be able to take Tama as a hostage and safely exit this apartment. Lieutenant Wahyu agreed, and they proceeded to the 15th floor, where Tama and his associates were hiding. However, before reaching the 15th floor, they must first deal with the guards and drug dealers on the ground floor. They are forced to fight the criminals one by one as they make their way to the top floor. Despite the fact that the fight was difficult and dangerous, the three of them eventually defeated the criminal syndicate. They then ran up the emergency stairs to the 15th floor. However, Rama came to a halt in one room when he saw his older brother being bound and tortured by Mad Dog. He rushed into the room and untied the chains in Andy's hands. Apparently, Mad Dog purposefully let Rama free Andy because he was confident that the two of them couldn't beat him. He arrogantly challenges them to a fight without the use of weapons. That means he'll fight both of them separately, one at a time. Even though Mad Dog was fighting alone against two people, his extraordinary fighting ability allowed him to overwhelm Andy and Rama. He almost broke Rama's neck, but Andy stopped him and immediately attacked him in the neck. Andy and Rama eventually defeated and killed Mad Dog after a fierce battle. Lieutenant Wahyu and another police officer, on the other hand, made it to the 15th floor and arrested Tama. Wahyu, however, shot his members and took Tama as a hostage after Tama was handcuffed. Simultaneously, Andy and Rama move upstairs, only to discover Lieutenant Wahyu betraying them and shooting at them, they were fortunate to have escaped the gunfire. Meanwhile, Tama, who is being held hostage by Wahyu, claims that he learned about the ambush operation from a corrupt police official named Reza from the start. Tama claimed that all of the ambush operations were staged by police officials in order to make Wahyu a scapegoat for police corruption and bribery. Wahyu was furious after hearing all of this because he realized his career as a police officer had been ruined. He shot Tama's head to death without hesitation, intending to end his life. The attempt, however, failed because the bullet in his gun had run out. Andy and Rama seized the opportunity to apprehend Wahyu. 
Andy then announced that everyone in the apartment would return to their respective rooms. Although Rama was unable to apprehend Tama alive, he was able to obtain information on high-ranking police officials who engaged in corruption and bribery. Andy then escorted Rama and his partner away from the scene so that Wahyu and all crime evidence could be turned over to the police. Andy turned around and separated from them as they approached the gate. The raid too continues by showing a sugarcane field, where Rama's older brother Andy is about to be executed by a mafia gang led by a man named Bijo. Andy had previously betrayed the leader of a criminal gang named Tama and taken control of the group in order to arrest corrupt police officers in the capital. As a result, Tama's confidant, Bijo, decides to kill Andy and take over all of Tama's businesses. In another location, Rama and Bao, who had escaped Tama's criminal gang's headquarters, are meeting with a police lieutenant named Bunawar, the head of the Internal Investigation Unit Division. Rama also brought Wahyu's lieutenant, who had previously taken part in Tama's ambush. Nonetheless, when traces of corruption and bribery were discovered, Tama arrested Wahyu and handed him over to Bunawar. Rama is ordered by his older brother to turn over all information about corrupt police officers who have accepted bribes from Tama. Bao had been seriously injured, so Bunawar's men rushed him to the hospital for treatment. Bunawar then directed his colleagues to shoot at Wahyu, who was tied to a chair, until he was killed. Rama is taken aback by Bunawar's decision, but explains that Wahyu will not be able to survive until tomorrow because he is currently the target of corrupt police officials. Wahyu had to be killed so that he could not reveal Rama's location. Bunawar then stated that he had formed a small team to track down and arrest all corrupt police officers when the time came. He also invited Rama to join his team, promising to assist Rama in protecting his family. First, Bunawar will fake Rama's death and inform the police that all of the officers involved in the ambush of Tama have died. As a result, high-ranking police officers and corrupt officials will be unaware of Rama's whereabouts. When Rama and his father are mourning Andy's death, the scene shifts. He knew from Bunawar's information that the people who had executed his elder brother were Bijo's group. After Bao's identity was revealed, Bijo murdered him and his family. As a result, Bunawar advised Rama to change his identity in order to protect his family from harm. Bunawar also instructs Rama to disguise himself and seek the trust of a gangster leader named Bangun. Bangun and Gota Bumi, the leader of another gangster group, have divided their territory equally and agreed to make peace with each other. Bunawar invites Rama to join Bangun's gangster group in order to obtain all information about corrupt police officers. This is because the information obtained from Tama's headquarters is still insufficient to convict corrupt police officers. Rama must first approach Bangan's son, Yuko, who is currently incarcerated for violence and abuse. He said goodbye to his wife and father before embarking on his undercover mission, as he would be gone for an extended period of time. Following that, he met with Bunawar to discuss his undercover mission in prison. Rama must have a criminal record that will catch Yuko's attention in order to approach him. As a result, he went into the bar and beat up a young man who had previously been in conflict with Yuko, resulting in his imprisonment. He then changed his name to Yuta so that no one would notice his disguise. Yuta was soon imprisoned for the previous abuse he had committed against a young man in a nightclub. That young man turned out to be the son of a politician. His prison life will be difficult because many inmates are constantly targeting and planning to kill him. Hundreds of inmates who supported the politician's son had surrounded and prepared to attack him even while he was in the bathroom. Yuta had no choice but to fight them on his own. Fortunately, despite being alone against all of them, he was able to defeat them all with his martial arts skills. When Yuta was having lunch in the prison cafeteria the next day, Yuko approached him and invited him to join his gang. As a result, Yuko can shield him from attacks by other inmates, including one of the most dangerous, Benny. He, however, declined Yuko's offer and promptly left him. Following that, a man named E.K.A., Bangan's confidant, came to visit Yuko in the detention visit room as usual. Yuko asked E.K.A. to look into Yuta's background during the meeting, but he said Yuta was just a villager with no connections. He also informs Yuko that Yuta was imprisoned because he assaulted a politician's son, which resulted in his imprisonment. The next day, the inmates sought shelter on the prison grounds from the rain. However, Yuta sensed an impending attack after observing the suspicious movements of the prisoners. He also prepared himself by holding a broom handle, and it turns out that he was correct. Benny and his gang approached Yuko with the intent of murdering him. Yuta quickly stopped them with a broom handle, and a fight ensued. Inmates from the Yuko gang began fighting with an inmate from Benny's gang. When the police officers noticed the growing uproar, they began preparing to separate them all. Massive brawls and bloodshed erupted in the heart of the prison grounds. During the chaos, Yuta realized Benny was about to stab Yuko, who had fallen unconscious, and ran to stop him. He almost killed Benny, but the police officers intervened, and the fight between the prisoners ended. Yuta was finally released from prison after two years in detention. He is picked up outside the prison by Yuko, who escaped first. His father asked Yuta to bring the two of them together to thank him for saving him while he was in prison. In another location, Yuko's father, Bangun, is speaking with Gotobumi about the Bijo criminal group which has recently made a lot of noise in their neighborhood. 
He also intends to solve Bijo's problem, but Gota stops him because he doesn't want all of his efforts to be in vain. Yuta and Yuko arrived at Bangun's office not long after. Bangun, who is beginning to trust Yuta, hires him as Yuko's accomplice and asks him to accompany Yuko in running their business. When Yuta arrived at his apartment, he immediately contacted Bonawar and informed him that he had infiltrated Bangun's mafia group. Yuta had his first day accompanying Yuko the next day. They arrived at an illegal adult filming location to collect deposit taxes. The situation became even more tense when Yuko demanded more money and the owner of Topan's business refused to pay more. Yuko had received information that Topan had been selling drugs into Bangdan's territory without a permit, so he wanted to demand a higher fee from Topan. Topan, on the other hand, denies this and begins programming his men to attack him. Yuta attacked Topan with a kick as soon as he realized Topan's men were about to take weapons. The fight between their groups started. Topan attempted to flee as the situation became more dire, but Yuta was able to track him down and apprehend him. After successfully delivering the deposit money to his father, Yuko requests that Bangun assign him a more difficult task than collecting the deposit money from small, less difficult criminal groups. But Bangun refused and told him to leave right away. Yuko, who is dissatisfied with his father and still does not trust him with a larger task, entertains himself by going to a karaoke bar with Yuta. Yuta took advantage of the opportunity to install a bug in Yuko's wallet when he went out to call someone. In other news, Bangun meets with a Percoso man to assassinate a small criminal gang that has violated the agreement in his territory. Percoso is Bangun's confidant who has been loyal to him for more than 30 years. That night, Percoso followed his target with a long machete in his hand and attacked them alone. He was able to defeat them all in a short period of time due to his superior fighting abilities. Bijo, on the other hand, invites Yuko to dinner at one of his posh restaurants to discuss business and go to his territory. Bijo had previously given him a small gift, namely the chance to kill Benny and his gang, who had previously planned to kill him in prison. He gladly accepted the gift. Yuko and Bijo began discussing their agreement while executing. He wants Yuko to take over Gotu's territory so that he can expand his business venture there. Yuko was aware that Bijo and Gotu had agreed to make peace and divide the territory fairly over time. As a result, Bijo asked Yuko for assistance in collaborating and pitting the band gun and Gotu's mafia groups against each other, igniting a power struggle. He purposefully incited Yuko because he knew how disappointed Yuko was with his father, who never trusted him with a larger task. As a result, Bijo takes advantage of the situation by convincing Yuko that this is his chance to impress his father. And, despite Bijo's suspicions, he agreed to the plan. Yuta, who knows all of their plans, has listened in on all of their conversations without their knowledge. The next night, Yuko plans to kill Percoso and fabricates the incident so that the person who killed Percoso is Goto's subordinate. That night, he asked Percoso to meet him at a nightclub, then left Percoso alone so his men could kill him right away. Percoso had to fight them all by himself. The fight between him and Yuko's men had wreaked havoc on the area. Percoso finally needed to finish one more young man after a long and exhausting battle. However, in his last moments of strength, an assassin hired by Yuko approached and mercilessly murdered him. Following Percoso's death, Yuko met with his father and informed him that, based on witness testimony, the person who killed Percoso was Goto's subordinate. He also forces his father to exact revenge on the Goto Mafia group for Percoso's death. However, he refused because he did not want the situation to escalate and result in more bloodshed. When he heard this, he left Bangan's office and called Bijo. He directs Bijo to carry out their plan and begins attacking a Japanese group affiliated with the Gota Mafia gang. Bijo also mobilized his men to capture and kill Japanese group members one by one, sparking a war between Bangan's group and Gota's group. When Yuta was driving a taxi, he was the target of attacks from members of the Gota Mafia group. Fortunately, he survived and defeated everyone who came after him. The following day, Gotu and Bangun met at a location to mediate over recent events. During the meeting, Gotu's son Keiichi stated that the attack by his subordinates was only retaliation for the assassination committed by Bangun's group against the Japanese group. Yuko, on the other hand, denied it, claiming that the first group to attack was Gotu's men, who had killed Percoso. Gotu denies this and persuades Bangun that the person who murdered Percoso was not a member of his organization. Hearing all of this, Bangun decided to end the war peacefully and accepted responsibility for all of his men's losses. Bangun immediately beat Yuko upon entering his office for not respecting him during the mediation process. When Ika saw this, she immediately called Yuta and asked her to come to the office and pick up Yuko. Soon after, Bijo and his men arrived at Bangun's office. Yuko had conspired with Bijo to betray his father and had decided to murder his own father. Yuko also shoots at Ika with the intent of killing him, but Yuta stops him and immediately tells Ika to flee. As a result, he was arrested by Bijo's men and taken to a location where he would be executed. When Ika noticed Yuta about to be loaded into a car, she immediately followed them to save him. Yuta immediately started fighting in the car after receiving the code from Ika. 
Yuta fights Bijo's men in a high-speed car, while Ika uses his car to get rid of Bijo's other men, they eventually defeated them and fled to a safer location after a fierce and dangerous battle. When they arrived at their destination, Ika revealed that he had recognized Yuta's disguise because he had previously been a police officer assigned to infiltrate Bangun's mafia group. However, after a series of events, he becomes loyal to Bangun and quits his job. After learning all of this, Yuta immediately contacted Bunawar to inform him of Ika's disguise. When Bunawar learned of this, he directed him to complete his final task, which was to arrest Bijo and a political official named Reza. They are known to have conspired to control all mafia fiefdoms and worked with many other corrupt politicians to expand their illegal business. Yuta drove straight to Bijo's headquarters and barged in. He fought alone once more, this time defeating all of Bijo's men. The battle between him and all of Bijo's men was fierce and drawn out. Meanwhile, Yuko discovered a bug in his wallet while cleaning himself in the bathroom, but he had no idea who had installed the bug. When he rejoined Bijo and Reza, he noticed the tattoo on Bijo's hand, which was identical to Benny's. Yuko also concluded that Bijo had long planned to pit two gangsters against each other. He also believes that Bijo has ordered Benny to kill him while he is still in prison, and that Bijo is currently plotting with Reza to get rid of him. At the same time, Yuta continues to struggle against the rest of Bijo's men. His opponent was even more difficult to deal with because he had to deal with an assassin who had previously killed Percoso. The fight between him and the assassin was brutal. Despite nearly dying in the fight, he killed the assassin and immediately went to where Bijo was. When Bijo realized Yuta was about to attack him, he grabbed a weapon and threw another weapon at Reza. Yuko, on the other hand, grabbed the gun and immediately murdered Reza. At the same time, Bijo attempted to shoot at Yuta several times. Yuko, on the other hand, shot Bijo in the leg and shoulder before killing him by shooting him in the head. He then intends to kill Yuta and put an end to this war. Yuta, on the other hand, managed to avoid all of Yuko's shots and defeat and kill Yuko. The film concludes with Keiichi inviting Yuta to join the Gota Bumi Mafia group. He refused, claiming that he had completed his last duty. The film then concludes.